Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. There's a lot of hype surrounding Rakoth and his eventual release into Total War Warhammer, but this coming patch cycle also comes with some changes to some other Dark Elf legendary lords. A decent amount of changes coming to Lokia Felhart, and some minor changes coming to the Crone Queen Helebron. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. We'll start off with Lokia, as he received the most changes and is the Lord with the most issues in campaign. Firstly, as we can see, his Kraken Lord trait has been changed ever so slightly, where now all Corsairs in his army will cause fear and his army now has immunity to Deep Sea, Storm and Reef Attrition. Lokir's own unique skill line has also been updated for this patch cycle. New effects have been added in while some have been removed, though the majority of them are new effects and they will focus around buffing up the Corsairs in the most cases and also being able to benefit from certain rights. Now his unique skill line is focused around his actual intended playstyle. Lokir's unique right, the right of Anafrima, has also been reworked. The previous effects from this right have been moved to Lokir's personal skill line, where now the right now grants 50% bonus sacking income, 50% bonus raising income, plus 10 black arc growth, and plus 20 movement range. And now for a rather exciting change. Lokir of course starts with a black arc, but this Black Ark specifically has been changed radically. This Black Ark now acts as its own special unique lord. Not only that, but it also has access to its own landmark. The landmark itself in its final level will increase the recruitment rank for all Black Ark Corsairs in all armies and also provide bonuses to all armies within its sphere of influence. The Black Ark itself will also have its own unique trait, the Kraken's Claw, which will have the following bonuses. Missile Resistance, 10% for Lord's Army. Melee Attack, plus 6 for Black Ark Corsairs. Black Ark Growth, plus 10. Attribute, Unbreakable. And Immune to High Seas, Reef and Storm Attrition. And finally with Lokia, you can already guess. As Rakaf has a quest which will allow him to take Karwan's car, you also have that very same quest with Lokir. Simply capture 2,500 slaves and you may automatically confederate with Karwan's car. And considering that your first enemy is a minor Skaven clan, you can finally leave the Lustria Ball very early into your campaign and not have to look back, which is absolutely amazing and a massive benefit to Lokir. Helebron herself has received the least of changes out of the two, but this is understandable as Helebron was a DLC character and was already pretty decent. One of her main changes is the Death Knight effects, where the effects themselves now provide more bonuses at high levels, but also reduced penalties at lower levels. It's not so punishing now at the lower levels, but it's also much more beneficial to keep it at a high level, as the bonuses themselves are actually really good. The only other change is that of the Blood Voyagers. Now they have greatly increased movement range. They're no longer unbreakable, however, but instead receive force-wide perfect vigor and additional benefits depending on Hellebron's current Death Knight level. This is also another reason as to why you'll want to keep the levels high as they'll benefit your Death Voyagers. It is important to note though that they can no longer regenerate by themselves, however it is now possible to sustain them and replenish them by performing extra Death Knights. Like I said, minor changes for Hellebron, but welcome changes at that. To be perfectly honest, I'm most excited about Lokia's changes, as, well, he really did need them. But what do you think about the Dark Elf changes coming in the new patch which will drop alongside Rakaf? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion.